Hi, I'm Nick Littlehouse. I'm an elite sports sleep coach and welcome to my YouTube channel, which I hope you like and subscribe to because we're going to be doing loads of these sessions uh, on an ongoing basis. This particular session, because I get asked all the time, you know, what's your top tips, Nick? You know, and everybody wants those little isolated solutions to, to sleeping problems, which are just growing massively around the population, around the planet. Never mind these pandemic periods. So I'm just going to give you a few little guidelines, top tips if you want to call them that. And this first one is about chronotypes. Chronotypes is a sleep characteristic. It's whether it's a little genetic twist. It's what makes you either a morning person or a nighttime person, an owl or a lark. That little twist is basically how you shape up to the start of your day. It's printed about the the production of melatonin, which is your suppressing hormone, and serotonin, which is your active hormone. And in the first part of your day, as the sun rises, and plenty of daylight, that stimulates the serotonin to be produced that tells your brain to unsuppress everything. If you're in diminished light and dark, then you produce melatonin. So in the morning, the difference between AMs and PMs, it's simply AMs react to this process much quicker, probably one to two hours earlier than nighttime chronotypes. It's really important because as you plan out your day and all your behavior, your lifestyle choices, your occupations, it's really key to your overall recovery and performance and productivity that you know this chronotype because you're gonna be really stimulated in the first couple of phases of the day and then that's going to start to diminish as the day progresses. For the PMers, they really get dragged out of bed. They don't like starting their day in an AM as well. And so as they progress through the day, suddenly they get this second wind. So they're quite happy to be awake at 11, 12, one o'clock at night, but then the brain will just crash you into sleep. So this understanding, and certainly about all your friends and your colleagues and partners, knowing their chronotypes as well means you can balance your approach. So it's not about trying to stop doing things. It's just knowing that if you're going to go to the gym in the morning, let's say, with your friend, and they're a PM chronotype, and you're an AM chronotype, then maybe there's things that both of you can do just to protect yourselves while you go into the gym, during the gym, and just coming out of it. So it's not about stopping things, it's just making it aware. And we've certainly got a lot of information, a lot of research, that if you don't have a balanced approach with your chronotype every day, then this can lead to a lot of recovery problems, particularly around insomniacal sleeping problems, anxiety and worry. So it's a great tip. It's easy to find out what it is. Most people know it anyway. You know, do you just wake up in the morning, switch the alarm off, you're starving, you're active, you wanna get going, you love the mornings, or if you're a PMO, you're trying to stay in bed as long as you possibly can, hitting that snooze button, just don't like it. The AMers like to go to bed a bit earlier and the PMers are still up at 12. So it's dead easy to find out, identify with your chronotype. If you think you're a bit of an in-betweener, not quite sure which one it is, then uh, you know, drop us a line and we'll help you sort that one out. But it's a great tip, it's a great start. The next one is sleeping in cycles. Now what this means is not that long ago before electric light was actually developed and brought onto our streets, the human being always slept in a polyphasic manner. And that's shorter periods more often, biphasic, triphasic, you know, three times a day, two times a day. Little breaks here and there, little sort of naps as they used to call them, now we call them CRPs, which are controlled recovery periods. And all of those things got lost when we started sleeping in one block at night. And that's called monophasic, and that's the eight hours a night, the myth of eight hours. It's extremely difficult to sleep for long blocks, particularly eight hours or more, to sleep all the way through without disturbances. What about shift workers? What about multi-shift workers, pilots, surgeons, parents? We all have to make adjustments to this process. So I've always understood that just trying to sleep in one block is difficult and not easy to manage. So sleeping in shorter periods more often can really help. And the way that looks is you simply take your most natural chronotype wake time. 
I'm an AM. -er. I love the morning. So mine is 6.30, okay? But for somebody who's a PM chronotype, that could be 8 o'clock. So you use that time, chop your day up into 90 minute cycles on the hour, on the half hour. So the first 90 minutes of my day between 6.30 is 8 o'clock. The cycle into 6.30 is from 5 o'clock to 6.30. So we chop your day up into 90 minute cycles. It creates four phases of the day. It creates 16 timings, 16 stages. And literally then you can subconsciously start using this to just have more rhythm and pattern and harmony to your day. Because that's what sleep is about. Rhythm, pattern, harmony, sunrise, sunset, 24 hours, roll, 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 roll. That's what it's about. So when you do this, you can do it right now. You start with that most consistent wait time or your chronotype wait time. Chop your day up into 90 minute cycles. Start thinking of little distracted breaks every 90 minutes, just for a couple of minutes. Just point your brain in a different direction. If you're looking at chaos and worry and anxious and lots of people running around, whatever it might be, or, or your work and the problems you're trying to solve, that's what your brain is processing. So if you just point it in a different direction, through the window, into the garden, outside, whatever, a lovely picture, something maybe on another device that's calming or just wander into a different room just for a minute or so. It just helps the recovery balance of your brain. And then you think about maybe snoozers for losers. Just think about something that a 30 minute, 30% 30 of a 90 minute cycle, a nap it used to be called, but a little period for you just to take some time out for you. It's your time. Work it into your day. You're not even trying to go to sleep. You're just taking some little mindset, mindfulness, vacant mind space. You could be sat by the window, standing by the window, getting lots of that great daylight, stimulating serotonin, keeping your mood and motivation happy. You could be doing all sorts of things, listening to something. And what I want to emphasize to you that this is not doing nothing. The more you have little distracted breaks, the more you have rhythm and harmony to your day with that nice consistent wait time, these little CRPs added into your world, then what you start to see is your recovery will go through the roof and it'll really have a marked effect on your everyday. So this next one is all about pre and post. Always been fascinated with how much so many people just focus on pre-sleep. You know, that last 60 minutes before your targeted sleep time, when there's only eight hours left before you've got to go and do it all again on repeat. And you can focus on anything from binaural beats to whale noises, you know, sounds, all sorts of interventions, sensory stuff, take a shower, read some books. You know, there's loads of things that people do, but it's almost too late. What I like to concentrate on is post-sleep. What you do from the point of wake. Now your brain is in control of sleep when you're asleep. So you'll have got what you've got when you wake up in the morning. So never mind how you feel, just crack on with your day. And the most important thing is an unrushed approach to your first 60, 90 minutes of that day, particularly for PM chronotypes, you know, the owls who don't like the mornings. And one critical factor there is being exposed to the strong blue light daylight. And that is something, so if you can't use the outside light coming into your bedroom, you have to use blackout curtains, then maybe you need to get a little lamp that will bring that light into your room. Maybe you can put something in the kitchen. Maybe you can put something around the home. You can use some really crazy tech things now where you can get that light channel through your ears into the same gland which produces all of your serotonin unsuppressive stuff. So really what you're trying to do is make sure that you're producing serotonin, which is telling the brain to unsuppress everything. That is triggered by light. That triggers your appetite. So maybe you can get breakfast. Certainly bladder is quite easy in the morning, but bowel can be difficult for some to empty. So all you're trying to do is a little bit of a tech delay starter, a little bit of mental challenge, a little bit of exercise, lots of light, in the first onrush period of your day sets you up for the rest of it. And I tell you, when you do that, then your sleep will improve later on in the day. So really focus on your post sleep and that will improve your overall sleep now and for your future. 
We're going to be doing some more sessions, probably deep diving into all the little secrets that I have, working with elite athletes in all sorts of sports around the world. And we've been exposed to so many others, working with surgeons, pilots, nurses, students, all sorts of varied people. So we've got a lot more experience. So we'll be sharing all of those tips, secrets and techniques that you could use yourself. So please like and subscribe to the channel and look forward to seeing you again soon.